here's your first glimpse at the revolutionary Open Source Brain Simulator 3 in action. We are building a system to add common sense to artificial intelligence using the Universal Knowledge Store. If you're interested in the future of artificial intelligence, I encourage you to join the Future AI Society where the design and development conversations are taking place. What you'll see in this video just scratches the surface of the wealth of capabilities being added to the project repository in coming months. But first, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, then leave a comment with your reactions and suggestions about what you'd like to see next. To have common sense, a person or a computer needs to interact intelligently with the real world. In order to do that, a person or computer must understand things at a fundamental level. Just knowing lots of facts will never be enough. We'll need to add the understanding of object persistence, three-dimensionality, the passage of time, cause and effect, things that any child knows but which are absent in today's AI. To do these, an AI will need new ways of recognizing objects and knowing how objects in the real world relate and react to one another, and how they relate to the AI itself so it can make intelligent, common-sense decisions as to what actions to take to participate successfully in the world. To meet this requirement, the primary storage in the Brain Simulator 3 is a graph a collection of nodes connected by edges, which is how your brain must store similar information. I've made other videos on why this is how the brain must work. In the Brain Simulator project, this graph is called the Universal Knowledge Store, or UKS. And nodes are called things, while edges are called relationships. Things may have labels and may contain information, but the system would still work if the nodes contain no labels or informations at all. After all, there are no labels or sophisticated data structures in your brain. So, a thing, which is a node, is an abstraction which could represent anything. A physical object, an action, an attribute, a sensation, in your mind and in the brain simulator, things are unambiguous, abstract concepts. The words in their labels are just for convenience of visualizing the information in the UKS. This demonstration has been written using the English language, but let me know in the comments if the system works in your language. Let's look at the principal features of the Brain Simulator 3 in its current iteration. It's built from independent modules which can all run in parallel, and new modules are being added all the time. It's easy to create new module types, and each module may have a dialog box. The four I'll touch on today are the UKS content display, the Add Statement dialog, the Query dialog, and the Add Clause dialog. I'll start with an initialized UKS which contains just the rudiments necessary to get the structure off the ground. In the Add Statement dialog, I'll add the fact that Fido is a dog. In the UKS display, things and relationships which are new or updated Turn green for a few seconds to draw your attention. Fido is indented under dog to indicate that Fido is a dog. Dog is indented under unknown object because the default for any new thing is that it is unknown. Although the graph has no information on what a dog is, it is now confident that Fido is one. We can easily add to the hierarchy that dogs are animals and see how this is represented. Likewise, we can add attributes to Fido by saying, for example, that Fido is brown. This is shown a bit differently in the UKS display, as you can see. 
Isa relationships are displayed as an indented tree structure, while other relationships are shown as a list. Within the UKS, Isa relationships are just like any other relationships. They are displayed in a tree for convenience. Isa relationships are a bit special in that things can inherit attributes from their ancestors, as I'll show you. If I use the query dialog to retrieve the attributes of Fido, I get that Fido is brown. If I add the fact that dog has fur, Fido inherits that fact from its ancestors. I can see the source of the knowledge by selecting full relationships and repeating the query. From this I can see that Fido is brown and Fido has fur because Fido is a dog. I can repeat the process by adding information that all dogs have four legs. I can see that Fido gets four legs through inheritance and let's add a few more attributes. Dogs have tails and dogs have two eyes. You can see the power of attribute inheritance as I've said before in other videos. It is a dramatic form of data compression, which also reduces the computational requirement in your brain and in the brain simulator. By simply adding that Rover is a dog, the system can immediately report any number of attributes for Rover without knowing anything else. Your mind does this all the time. If you hear that Mary is a grandmother, your mind can immediately picture Mary. The image may be wrong in some respects because Mary is not a typical grandmother, but your mind can figure that out soon enough and correct your image of Mary as you get additional information. The UKS also supports exceptions. So I can say, for example, that Tripper is a dog, but poor Tripper only has three legs. When we query the attributes of Tripper, we can see that the has three legs attribute overrides the has four legs attribute of the usual dog. I cannot overstate the importance of this capability, the capability of handling exceptions to usual inheritance rules. When related to how your mind stores information about people you know, for example, you don't need to remember all of a person's attributes, you only need to remember the exceptions, the things which make a person unique. Your mind and the UKS fills in all the common attributes automatically. The last feature I'd like to introduce is the concept of clauses. Consider that Fido can play fetch. We can see that in the attributes, especially when we focus the query to only look for can play attributes. Now we'll add the conditional phrase that Fido can play Frisbee if the weather is sunny. When we look at Fido's attributes, we can see that he can play both Fetch and Frisbee because the weather is sunny. If we tell the UKS that the weather is not sunny, then when we ask what Fido can play, he can only play Fetch. Notice that on its own, the phrase Fido can play Frisbee cannot be determined as either true or false. It depends on the state of the second clause. Even the clause, if the weather is sunny, is neither true nor false on its own. It depends on the actual state of the weather. Overall, the if statement creates contingent information. This is another key to common sense because the majority of common sense decisions are based on information which is conditional on other information, that is, on the context of any situation. This clause structure connects one relationship to another, as opposed to a single relationship which connects one thing to another. Although, just getting started, this concept has unlimited possibilities for real-world knowledge. For example, 
If Fido played Frisbee in the park yesterday, this can be represented by a few clauses like this. This implies that every factoid your mind knows is in the here and now, at a position visible in front of you and in the present. Then your mind can modify this information to any location and time frame with a few simple clauses, which could also be searched in the same way as other things and relationships. As you experiment with the Brain Simulator 3, notice that each dialog box has a question mark button in the lower right, which displays brief explanations for that dialog and could provide answers to your questions. To summarize, the UKS provides many features needed to represent information in the form of a graph. With its inheritance, exceptions, and clauses, it may already be capable of representing anything your mind can. Imagine, if you can think it, the UKS can represent it. As you learn more about the UKS, keep track of thoughts you have which you think the UKS will have trouble with. Perhaps additional features will be needed and we'll implement these as well. In an upcoming video, I'll show more features about the usefulness of the UKS. Also, be ready for more cool features to be added to the Brain Simulator 3, including a language interface, cause and effect relationships, and a mental model. I'll make videos on them as soon as I can. In the meantime, I hope you'll follow the link and join me on this adventure by joining the Future AI Society. Of course, likes, subscribes, and comments are always appreciated. I look forward to interacting with you directly through the Society, and of course, thanks for watching.